Hey guys, it's me again. I'm going to keep this really simple. We're going to talk about the New Deal in a nutshell, and then you guys are going to do all your research on the programs, because let's face it, nobody wants to hear about the New Deal. All right, so here we go. Hoover has done nothing to fix the Great Depression, and so he's going to lose the next election to President Franklin Delano Roosevelt, FDR, cousin of Theodore Roosevelt. Not the same person. Please don't get them confused. All right, so FDR is a Democrat. He's going to pretty easily win that election with a promise to try to come in and uh, fix the Great Depression. Um, he has a lot of support from the average working class people who want to fix the Depression. He also gets a lot of support from the African American community who has been hit really hard with the Depression. Um, many of the African American community saw how FDR had um, tried to integrate his own factories in the past, um, or his own workforce in the past, and so they had supported him. And so one thing that's kind of interesting at this time is that our voting patterns really start to switch. If you think about the old Democratic Party, that was our party of the South, of the Confederacy, of the KKK, and um, now all of a sudden we're going to start to see traditional voting patterns um, where African Americans more traditionally will vote with the Democratic Party. And so that is still a trend that typically still exists um, to this day that started during the Great Depression in the hopes that these programs that FDR had promised would help the African-American population. There are some that will. There's a whole lot that actually uh, won't. So FDR wins the next presidency. He is going to be very good at calming the American people down. He's going to give what are called fireside chats on a regular basis. So he actually sits by the fireplace in the White House, gets on the radio, and basically tells people um, what's going on, kind of like the State of the Union, and um, what he's doing to fix the economy. So, you know, I keep making a lot of comparisons to what's happening today. So if you think about the fact that kind of every time you turn on the news, there is um, a new press briefing with our president about the state of what's happening with coronavirus um, and what he's doing and what the administration is doing to try to fix things, um, kind of like FDR, but getting on the radio, um, you know, telling people this is what's happening, this is where we're at, this is what we're doing. So those fireside chats are very uh, important to people, um, you know, that they can hear that he's not another Hoover coming in and just going, oh, the economy will fix itself. Uh, he will rely on what's called a brain trust. Those are his advisors. He uses a lot of economists, a lot of Harvard professors and things like that to give him advice on how to fix the economy rather than just his traditional cabinet. He does also try to pack the court. When he comes up with his plan to fix the economy, he's afraid that it's going to get shot down as unconstitutional. And so he tries to pack the court with extra justices. Um, that actually doesn't happen. He does not get those extra justices on the court. And therefore, actually, a lot of his New Deal programs do, in fact, get shot down by the Supreme Court. So be careful when you look at the New Deal programs, when you go off to do your assignment on looking them up. Um, not all of them will stick. There are some that do get shot down by the Supreme Court. Uh, FDR also will put in place our very first female cabinet member, Frances Perkins. She becomes the Secretary of Labor, and um, if you've ever watched Dirty Dancing, the um, main girl in there, Baby, her real name was Frances. She says, um, I was named after the first woman in the cabinet, so that helps you to remember that. And FDR overall will rely on something called Keynesian economics, uh, which is basically that you have to use money that you don't have in order to boost the economy and stimulate it out of this recession or depression. So there is going to be a lot of government spending that's going to take place, and that means actually a lot of people um, do not support this program, especially within the Republican Party and those who have maintained their wealth. They're going to feel like it's a lot of really haphazard um, spending. So we'll be looking a little bit at that before I get off this uh, video. All right, so um, the goals of the New Deal, we have what are called the three R's, relief, recovery, and reform. Relief is that immediate relief. I want to give people money to be able to, you know, put food on the table, pay their electric bill so that the heat doesn't get turned off, those basic things. Recovery would be getting people back into homes, uh, getting people back into jobs, things like that. And then reform is making sure that this never happens again. How do we fix things so that you guys don't have to worry about a Great Depression? And especially right now, are some of these programs going to be the saving grace that fix this so that, you know, whatever we're going to head into doesn't happen? Um, some of these programs maybe did help out during the Great Recession to prevent it from turning into a depression. You'd have to talk more to an economist to, to get into that. Okay, the first 100 days um, of FDR um, trying to introduce his New Deal programs, there are 15 pieces of New Deal legislation that get passed. 
Uh, if you've ever watched our Congress try to agree on passing anything, you know that that is a pretty astounding number of uh, legislation pieces to get passed in 15 days. So there's actually two parts to the New Deal. There's the first 15 days, first New Deal, and then there's more that will come after. The New Deal is influenced by a number of different people. Um, Huey the Kingfish Long, he proposed something called the Share Our Wealth Program. Uh, Huey Long basically said that every man should be a king. He said nobody should have over $8 million. If you had over $8 million, that that money should basically be confiscated by the government and divvied out and given to everyone else. It's a little bit like, like kind of like a socialism type thing. Uh, but it will end up influencing some things within the New Deal, like heavy taxes on the rich, so that that money can be used to fund some of the New Deal programs. Um, Dr. Francis Townsend believed that um, anybody over the age of 60 should get a, um, I think it was $200 a month, I might be giving you the wrong amount here, uh, so long as they could spend it, that would have completely devastated the national budget, so it doesn't happen, but it does set the stage for things like social security down the road. Remember, at this time, so many people had lost their life savings. You had people that were too old to even work, that were retired and so forth, that now had lost everything in the bank failures. So, you know, we had to look at something to get those older people uh, money. So that will influence things like Social Security. And then finally, Father Charles Coughlin. Um, he had pushed to nationalize the bank. He was actually a priest that gave these super anti-Semitic sermons on the radio. But one of the things he talked about a lot on the radio was the need for the government to take over the banks. While we never completely nationalize the banks, during this time, the president does temporarily take over the banks and the government does start to do some regulation of the banks during the Depression. So he'll have some influence over that. But like I said, not everybody's gung-ho about all of this, um, especially in the Republican Party. Um, they are not real happy about all of this government intervention and the heavy taxing on the rich and so forth. Um, if you ever grew up watching the movie Annie, the original one from the 80s, there's this great scene where Daddy Warbucks is sitting in his office. He's still a millionaire amidst the Depression. He's one of the people that didn't lose his money. And somebody comes in and says, FDR is on the phone for you. And he starts complaining about, like, that guy just wants to take all my money. Um, so, you know, if you grew up watching that scene of him in the office, maybe this will start to kind of ring a bell that he and FDR kind of didn't get along um, because of that. Because he was referring to the New Deal programs. So the Republicans aren't real happy um, because they view this as a lot of excessive spending. And they're the ones that are going to get taxed uh, really heavily um, in a lot of cases, and so they're feeling the impact of that. The American Liberty League is a super conservative Republican group that speak out against it. And um, again, the Supreme Court will shoot some of the New Deal programs down. Um, so there's a few that you'll be looking at later, like the AAA that get ruled unconstitutional, um, the NIRA that gets ruled unconstitutional, etc. But I'm going to let you guys look at all of those um, programs yourself. It's what we call alphabet soup. They're all kind of acronymed. Um, so um, as you guys are looking at these programs, just kind of know that you could see them the full way or you could see a lot of them as like three letters. Um, so I'm going to let you play with them. I want you to at least be a little bit familiar with them. They're not super fun. Um, but yeah, I'm going to let you guys play with them because I don't want to lecture about them. You don't want to listen to me lecture about them. All right. So um, happy digging on those programs and uh, finding some information out about them. I'll see you guys later.